Hello, my name is Cody Mendenhall. I'm 13 years old. I'm happy to be here. My favorite colors are pink and purple. Can you tell? I'm in 7th grade at Redlands Middle School. This is my talker. To help me talk. Please be patient when I am typing. Sometimes it takes a moment to find my words. Now I'd like to bring my mom, Jen, out. Cody's a typical, but not so typical teenager. She is a vibrant and determined 13-year-old. She also has cerebral palsy. Epilepsy of a few different forms, a gastronomy tube, which gives her most of her nutrition, she is considered nonverbal. However, if you spend a few moments with her, you'll understand everything she has to say. Cody also uses her wheelchair and a walker to get around. I love all types of tech. I have a YouTube channel. It is Cody's Life, if you want to subscribe. I love to text my friends and chat on Marco Polo. I'm very good at coding. I was student of the month for computers. Cody was student of the month at Redlands Middle School in September. And I asked her teacher, why did you choose Cody for, for student of the month for computers? And he said it was an easy decision because she had had twice as many lines of code than her peers. As you can see from this picture, Cody was definitely a full-term baby. <laughs> However, things took a turn from the worst during our labor, and we had a traumatic and very difficult birth. Cody was born with an APGAR score of one. APGAR stands for appearance, pulse, grimace, activity, and respiration. Babies born with an APGAR score between one and three need respiration or resuscitation. Cody did need to be resuscitated. She was intubated twice, both times incorrectly. This resulted in a diagnosis of hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, which basically means lack of oxygen to the brain. The doctors explained to us that your brain starts to shut down the non-essential functions for life. This means Cody didn't have a suck-swallow reflux at birth, this having the gastro, or her gastronomy tube put in. They also said she had lightning in the brain, which we later found out was severe epilepsy. In her first hour of birth, Cody was loaded with Ativan and phenobarbital to help try to slow down her seizures. Cody would spend the next 41 days in the NICU, neonatal intensive care unit in Anchorage, Alaska. We were thrown into the world of disability and technology when Cody was only a few days old. When Cody was about a year old, the doctors were still worried about her failure to thrive and her ability to eat. So she had what's called a Nissen fundoplication. This meant that food could go in her body, but not come back out. At that time, our team began to grow even bigger. We had neurologists, gastroenterologists, speech, physical, occupational therapists, early intervention specialists, and even more to come. You may notice one thing about Cody, even in this situation, is she usually has a smile on her face. As Cody began to grow, her dad and I realized we needed to figure out a way to advocate for her needs as well as teach her how to advocate for herself in the future. When Cody was nine months old, her and I traveled to Juneau to testify in front of the Alaska State Legislature on the importance of Medicaid for all of those that have disabilities. <laughs> Thank you. Cody continued to grow, continued to thrive, continued to be silly, liked to play outside in a walk in the rain because we did live in Alaska, and be able to even welcome home a new puppy. Cody uses a lot of assistive technology, as you can see some of it here. So what is assistive technology? It's a tool that improves the quality of life for a person that's using it. My favorite tech item is my virtual reality headset. It makes me feel like 
I'm in the game. This may be the highest piece of technology that she does have, and it is a lot of fun. However, it hasn't always been high tech all of the time. I've had to figure out how to stay one step ahead of her in order to teach myself so that I can help her with her learning. Thankfully for that, we've been able to attend some conferences, Families on the Forefront of Technology, and this last fall, the Coleman Institute Conference for those with cognitive impairments. And through those, we learn about things as virtual reality, but also how Google can help our home be smarter and how we can help her be more independent and inclusive in her world. But first, let's go back to the beginning. When Cody was little, she had a walker with her sling seat so she would be safe and still be independent. Then came the chariot, is what we called it. It's very important for wheelchair users to sometimes be upright. She could get around the house in this, and it was a lot of fun. One day I decided, let's put on all of the gear. <laughs> she had a helmet to shape her head. She had her eyeglasses, her patch, her feeding tube, her feeding tube pump, her braces around her arms, and I'm sure in this picture she had on her leg braces as well. Needless to say, we didn't keep her like this forever. We also realized we needed to work on her vocabulary and her form of communication. When she was first learning to communicate, we used something simple like this, just pictures she could point to or we could put them into a binder. Then we switched to something called a Cheap Talk 8. This was fun because we were able to actually record voices so she could push a button and be able to hear what the word was and start creating a bigger vocabulary. At about four years old, we, need, we realized we needed to actually expand that vocabulary even more. So we flew to Denver and met with the Assistive Technology Partners, which is part of the CU in, in Denver. And they had these technology devices that were just for communication. <laughs> which was a lot of fun, and they did actually start to improve her, her ability to communicate. But she didn't always like to comply, because she had me to help her communicate and to interpret for her. In 2010, we moved to Colorado, and about a year later, we found what was a life-saving bit of technology, the iPod, with an app called proloquo to go This enabled her to form sentences, and is something that she still uses today. Cody uses her iPad at school. She uses different types of apps, Pictello to able to do presentations. She can use the Proloquo to text, and she also uses a lot of social media as well, Facebook, Instagram, texting, all with parental controls, of course. <laughs> but one fun thing she did with her talker not too long ago, we call it the talker, is that she decided she was going to order a pizza from Domino's. So she used her talker to talk to Google Mini to call Domino's, which it did. <laughs> the guy on the phone was confused at first, but then I got online and explained what was going on, and he was awesome, and Cody got her pizza and Pepsi. <laughs> Cody's iPad also allows her to turn on the television, turn on some lights in our house, and we're figuring out ways that we can help create a, more, a smarter home for her as well. Technology gives Cody the freedom to move. As you watch this video, I'm not sure if this was a parenting fail <laughs> or it was just a sign of what was going to come ahead. <laughs> Running as fast as she can towards a boulder with no helmet. Okay. I was Ashton's flower girl. I camp on the mesa with my family. I have a new trike. So cool. This is Jet. He's a huge horse I love to ride. I go rock climbing. And stood up on a paddle board. I've even been on a zip line at Roundup River Ranch Camp. Wait. Playing soccer with my friends is so fun. It's okay. 
We've always, as a family, made it a priority to keep Cody as active and involved in her community as possible. Whatever it was that she wanted to be interested in, we tried to make it happen for her. But we haven't done it alone. There's a lot of nonprofit organizations, such as Colorado Discoverability and Grand Valley Equine Assisted Learning Center here in Grand Junction that help us get her and others out into the environment to experience that. But another critical part has been the schools her paras, her principals, the lunch ladies, the custodians, people that have been with her every day have helped her move along. Cody also played Challenger Baseball, which some of you might be familiar with. Okay. Playing soccer with my friends is so fun. I went fast in the Special Olympics and just went ice skating for the first time. I love to swim in my pool. Skiing is one of my favorite things. Mom and me ride our tandem trike, even to the bank. We also enjoy a good adventure. Just ask Grandma. She's the one that usually comes with us. <laughs> Plus, it's also fun to see people's reactions to a little girl in a pink wheelchair that have never seen something like that before. According to our friend Brett from Brett Approved, who runs a, a travel blog for people with disabilities, says that Americans spend $13.6 billion on disability travel and entertainment each year. So this is definitely a huge part of our economics. My grandma, mom, and I went to Washington, D.C. We did a walk for epilepsy on the National Mall. From coast to coast and a lot of places in between, Cody's done a lot of traveling. This is not our bus. It is pink and purple, and of course, she thought she needed it. <laughs> this next picture, I think, exemplifies who Cody really is. You may be able to see in the background is her wheelchair. And she's pointing up to the sun. To me, this says, nothing can stop me. We've also had a lot of fun out at some national parks. A few years back, we went to Arches National Park, and she used her walker to go out to Balancing Rock, and then on the way back, stopped to greet two busloads of people, each one of them. <laughs> and sometimes we have to travel when it's not so fun. We do go over to the Den Children's Hospital in Denver, and sometimes things don't always go as planned. A few years ago, we were snowed in in Denver. Even the airport was closed. And we realized our hotel wasn't as accessible as we thought it was going to be. So Cody decided to get creative and take things into her own hands. She designed a hotel with over 100 themed rooms, all accessible for everyone. Our friend Brett, again from Brett Approved, wrote about her in his blog, recognizing her as a young entrepreneur. <laughs> My friend Cody has a secret studio at Children's Hospital. Have dance parties. A lot of times people think that technology for those with disabilities has to be disability specific, but it really doesn't. It, it can use mainstream technology and we just figure out how to make it work. At Children's Hospital, the Seacrest Studios is a prime example of this. These studios are a closed circuit TV and radio that shows to all of the rooms in the hospital. So the kids can participate and learn and listen to music, or if they're feeling better, they can come down as well. We've been fortunate enough to go out and kiss a few dolphins, meet a guy in a kilt and pick some produce, and even meet some famous people along the way, although my husband had to tell me three times who this guy was. <laughs> Technology also gives Cody the freedom to play. I like to play the piano with Morgan. I have so much fun hanging out with my friends and my family. You may have noticed that I've had a few pictures of these three girls in some of the slides. Let me tell you, they are a powerhouse of honoriness. The three of them have been friends since they were about six years old. They all have some form of a diagnosis that they use a wheelchair and they're talkers, but don't let that fool you. They're all incredible, incredibly smart. They've all found their pathways and their journeys to get to where their talents take them. And of course, those amazing smiles don't hurt. Our life is full of lots of friends and families to help us smile 
along the way. Technology also gives freedom, Cody the freedom to learn and to succeed. For us, our vision is to help her become independent, and part of this is doing chores and starting to work on a work ethic. I love to do chores and get an allowance. Daddy, can I have a self-driving Tesla? <laughs> <laughs> this might be a technology we're going to wait a while on. <laughs> but something just here in our own community we discovered that really does help. This is Taco Bell. Taco Bell has amazing order tablets. So I can order my cheese quesadilla. All by herself. I was in tears. <laughs> so time continues to whirl on and we move forward, <laughs> trying to figure out how we can fo most help her advocate for herself to be able to move forward and achieve her goals. I would like to be the first newscaster to use a communication device on the Western Slope. <laughs> <laughs> before we close, before we close, I'd like to share a short story about what happened this week. On Wednesday, Cody and her, and her peers in their PE class showed the school, the seventh graders in their school, a dance that they had just performed and learned through their PE class, including Cody in her manual wheelchair, all of them working together and dancing and having a great time, which, my friends, was truly inclusion. So, as we close, I wanted to be able to say thank you for being here, for being a part of Team Cody. We hope to inspire you, to inspire others, to realize that disability isn't a tragedy. We can make our world more inclusive for all abilities. And I will give Cody the final word. My talker and my wheelchair are part of me. I just love being myself. And be sure to subscribe to Cody's Life on YouTube. Thank you. Thank you.